Hey guys, Anthony Pietrabone here, back with another market update. In today's video, I'm going to go over the trades we took the past week, see where the market went, and then see where we think the market's going to go. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're going to definitely want to hit that subscribe button and give a thumbs up if you appreciate the video. Without further ado, let's dive into the chart and the trades we took. So we saw actually uh, SPX fall to 38.50 and rent right to my take profit. So what you'll see in ES Futures is the contract actually rolled over. So this is now the June contract and it's showing that it's much higher than SPX. Right now, what you're seeing on the screen, 38.97 is the June contract. And if I click on the March contract, it's 38.62 with a low of 38.46. Remember we got in the short 40.70 and our take profit was 38.50. I personally thought that this trade right here was gonna hit 38.50 by the end of the month, but we hit it far sooner. So because of that, I'm actually flipping long for a trade with much smaller size because I, I got in this position with full size. My stop was at the 41.40 area and I took some partials off when we hit 39.50 on Thursday. Then we kind of just flushed right down, went to 38.50, and I experimented with some longs going into the close on Friday. Here is the trade right here. So it was plus 220 points, three to one R, and I hit that in a matter of a few days. So that was one trade that was huge for me. A second trade that was huge for me was the trade of recap before where we went long from about 3,900s up to 4036 flips back short at 4070 and took that profit. Now what I'm currently in is the long at 3900 on the June contract, TP being the 3972, stop at 3880, basically using the recent lows we just set on Friday as a stop. And we're looking at a 3.3 risk to reward ratio. Much smaller size because I've been on a hot streak with bigger size and I don't want to get too confident, too overconfident. So just um, dropping size a bit for this trade because again, I'm more confident in the shorts, but I think we're overdue for a bounce to stop out shorts again. So that's basically why I took, uh, took this long. This is on the one hour chart. We swept all lows and then we had a one hour push up. Didn't Wasn't able to take out lows on the next bar and the final bar going into close was actually a, a bullish close kind of pushing above to the left. So. I'm thinking we're going to take out, honestly, up into the 3980 level, but I'm being conservative and just shooting for this wick here where my mouse is. Think we're going to sweep those highs before we continue lower, possibly. If you've been following my videos for the past few weeks, you'll see that I kind of overlaid this HYG, which is high yield bonds, over the S&P 500. And I came to the conclusion seeing that we're likely going to continue down to about the 3700 area as a, as a potential bottom because we've been following along every time we made a low on HYG ever since 2022. Then S&P 500 has followed just by a delay of about three to four weeks potentially. So what this would suggest here is every every time we hit a low, the market followed. So we didn't, we broke this at the end of 2022 where you know it was December 2022, we made a low HYG, we didn't quite get to that low, we got just above it. And then we pushed up and then we had a really big divergence here where now HYG actually went lower than the previous low, but SPX has held up better than these lows. If this continues from the past, then what we're likely to see is us trade down to the supports that we made on the weekly chart on the SPX in October when we made those lows at about 3,500s. These highs are sitting at about 3,700. So this is suggesting that if this plays out still, in the next two weeks, we're likely to see 3,700 on SPX where we had a close of 3,860, which this, this suggests another potential 150 points of downside in the next two weeks by the end of March. But I still think that we're gonna have about 50, 50 points, maybe 70 points of upside pushing up into the 3900s again on SPX in the coming couple days before we head back down and trade back down to the low 3700s by the end of March. So what would this would look like on the daily chart? Let me just switch to the daily chart. Personally, I think we're gonna see something like this where uh, Monday we trade up and we get up to the resistance here to the left, possibly coming up here just to get a little higher, maybe trade into the resistance there. And then in the coming weeks, basically just chop back down and trade under these lows made in December 
at some point by the end of March. And if I take off the overlay so you can see the actual numbers, on SPX, again, looks like we trade up into about 39.50, hit resistance, possibly up into 39.80 as a max, in my opinion, before trading before trading lower and dumping into the mid 3700s to low 3700s by the end of March, possibly early April. That's personally what I'm thinking, but again, I'm long, right? So I have small size long. Again, my long here is about 3900 on the futures contract, but on SPX, that looks like getting in long about 10 points above the low, which was 3860, 3850 net about 38.58 on SPX, having the take profit be about 70 points above, which would be around 39.30, and my stop being at below those lows at about 38.40. So this is per, this is currently the long I'm in. Again, could trade up into 39.70 to 39.80, this resistance to the left. I just don't think we're gonna go straight down right now to those lows we made in December at about 37.70 to 37.90. I think we're gonna trade up, stop out more shorts, potentially go all the way up into resistance to the left at 39.80, but conservatively come into about 39.30 on SPX, then trade lower into the end of March, about that 37.30 to 37.40 area, end of March, early April. We saw the VIX finally have a big spike. So we went all the way up to 29. So there was a ton of fear because of the bank collapse. All the bank stocks were selling off very hard. Only bank stock that really held up was JP Morgan. We saw a Silicon Valley bank collapse. And in pre-market, it was actually down to 35. So from just a couple weeks ago, you can see that we went from you know 360 all the way down to 35 in pre-market on Friday. It's a 90% drop. Bank collapse, we probably already saw the news. So all the bank stocks have been falling. If you could look, you could take a look at XLF, which is the financial sector, really having a significant decline, you know, down about 10, 15% just in a couple weeks. And a UVX Y climb because of that. So big spike in volatility, huge spikes in volatility. But if you take a look at the put call ratio, it's actually very high. So I think they're gonna stop out shorts before they continue lower. One last thing I wanted to take a look at was um, dollar rates and gold. So dollar had this dump down and with the dollar going down, the market still went down. So I personally think that we're gonna come down a bit. Um, the dollar could have support here, honestly, and push back up. Uh, gold has been pushing up drastically. So recently, as gold went up and dollar, the dollar went down, then the market would bounce. But it's kind of flipped because since the banks have been going, since the bank going under and having some underlying issues, it's now looking like bad news is bad news and good news will be good news because bad news shows that we're gonna go into recession. So you'll see that the rates have been collapsing. So 5% down, 5% down, past just two days, really going down significantly because this means that the economy is a lot weaker than everyone thought and bad news is bad news. Previously, when the rates were going up, market would fall. When rates would go down, market would go up. But now it's flipped and the flipping basically means that if the dollar continues to have weakness, then the economy will likely actually continue to have weakness. Same with uh, gold. Gold goes up, market may go down because it means that the economy is very weak. And as rates fall, then the, the market's gonna go down because it, again, it means the economy is weak and means that we have a recession coming on and potential hard landing, not soft landing or no landing. Be on the lookout for that midweek market up, update video coming out Wednesday or Thursday. And then again, full week recap coming next Sunday at 12 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And remember, I, tr I trade futures, which is the S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ. So if you trade ES futures or NASDAQ futures, you're definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, again, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see more of. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.